In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Abba, dearly beloved in Christ, and Father, Emmanuel, Allah, and I'll like to share with you a touch of God's love, thus a short of action and prayer, on the Holy Mass readings of Sunday, 14th April, 2024. The readings are taken from Acts 2, 13 to 15, 17 to 19, Psalm 4, 2, 4, 7 and 9. And first John two one to five and Luke twenty four thirty five to forty eight. The theme of the reflection is how to live the resurrection. How to live the resurrection. The first reading says Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, Raise him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said, through all his prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Now. You must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. And the second reading says, I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is a sacrifice that takes our sins away and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping His commandments. Anyone who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what He has said, what He has said, God's love comes to perfection. <clears throat> God's love comes to perfection in Him. And the Gospel says, The disciples told their story of what had happened in, on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about all this. When Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they thought uh, they, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they still could not believe it. And they stood there dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them. So you see how it is. It is written, 
that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem is you are witnesses to this. Beloved, the gospel teaches us how how to live the resurrection. First, it is by proving that Jesus has risen by what he is doing in our lives. That was what the disciples of Emmaus were doing in, and Jesus appeared to confirm it. They were trying to convince their colleagues by sharing their experiences with them. However, Jesus wanted these other disciples to also preach his resurrection. So he didn't want them to rely on hearsay, but on concrete experience. Thus, he appeared to them and proved to them that he had truly risen. He did this by showing himself eaten with them, and above all by giving them peace and joy. Therefore, to live the resurrection, we too must first share our personal experience of the Lord. Our, uh, we must share our personal experience of the Lord with others. It means that if we have a personal relationship with Jesus, He will be working in our lives. It will work in our lives and we should be able to share with others what Jesus has done in our lives. And I can give a testimony about this because I just organized a retreat for some people. And uh, during the retreat, uh, it was not only by what I shared with them that convinced them of the power of Jesus Christ but what they themselves experienced, the healings that Jesus worked in their lives, the power that he showed in their lives in the course of the retreat, convinced them that Jesus was really alive and he could work wonders. Secondly, Jesus then shared the scriptures with them and concluded by saying, So you see how it is written that the Christ will suffer, die and rise, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all. In other words, he explains to us why we should repent and uh, be forgiven. Why we should repent in order to be forgiven. It implies that when we obey God wholeheartedly, we will, ex we will experience persecution till death we will experience persecution till death but after death we will rise into glory but if we disobey we will die and be condemned so if we want to die and resurrect into glory like Jesus we should repent receive forgiveness and remain obedient till death in other words, what happened to Jesus will happen to us when we are truly obedient to God. Before his death, his life was characterized by glory and persecution, suffering. After his death, his life is characterized by only glory. If we disobey, our life may be characterized by pressure and suffering before death, but after death, it will be characterized by only suffering. The first reading shows that the apostles took this message seriously. They told the Israelites, Peter told the Israelites that the Christ they crucified has risen and is living in glory. So they should repent and seek forgiveness so that they too can have the hope of living in glory. In the second reading, John says the same thing. He preaches the same message to us. He says, we should stop sinning. But if anyone should sin, uh, the person should repent. If we should sin, we should repent and receive forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus. If we obey the commandments, 
by avoidance sin, the love of God will become perfect in us. That means the glory of God will be seen in our lives. Dearly beloved, in the name of Jesus, receive the grace of a personal relationship with God. In the name of Jesus, you'll have testimonies to share with others. In the name of Jesus, you'll preach repentance and forgiveness to others. In the name of Jesus, you'll live the resurrection. Amen. Can you share God's love? By subscribing to this YouTube channel and share or discussing this message with others. The subscription is free. The icon for subscription is at the bottom corner of the rest of our video. And may Almighty God bless and protect you with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.